Can you hear that? The complete silence of the entire British newspaper and broadcasting industry on the Labour files. I watch these films, they're very, very well made, and they do raise questions which scream to be answered. I find a lot of it very shocking, and I've felt a little ashamed that I did buy into the narrative about Jeremy Corbyn. And I do feel, having watched those films, that I should have been a lot more careful and scrupulous about some of my journalism. And I think others could make the same self-assessment as well. As journalists, we have a duty to examine ourselves. The Labour Files dismantles the central narrative of the media and the BBC about the Corbyn years. And this was a narrative which was pushed onto the front pages of all the papers. It was the subject of a panorama film not long before the general election. But it should be taken seriously. It's a very serious piece of work. And for the newspapers just to ignore it as if it never happened, and for the BBC to ignore it, is unacceptable. Because it's not like the Al Jazeera films a general abstract commentary on the media. They provide one very specific case after another. So it should be possible if the Al Jazeera narrative is wrong and the media narrative was right to actually come back and rebut them. Instead of which we have had complete silence from the BBC, from the Guardian, from the Times, from the Telegraph, from the Mail, ITV, other organisations which did peddle all of them exactly the same narrative. Not long before the Al Jazeera film went out, the Ford report by one of Britain's most distinguished QCs, commissioned by Keir Starmer, looked into Labour anti-Semitism or alleged anti-Semitism and came to very similar, strikingly similar conclusions to what Al Jazeera did. Ford's a QC, is a respected man, and he, to an extraordinary extent, favoured the so-called Corbynista narrative of events. And yet the media sort of ignored it largely. It was given very downplayed coverage, and such coverage as there was, much of it was very skewed to make it appear that Ford had actually confirmed the media narrative. As if once a, a narrat media narrative has been created, it's sort of impossible to break. There's a second point here. Why does it take a foreign news organisation to have to come in and look at the standards of British press reporting? The same thing happened with the New York Times investigation into Trojan Horse, which we now know there wasn't a Trojan Horse conspiracy. There was no plot to take over schools by Islamists. Yet, if you go back eight years, the British media ran a frenzy about the threat to Birmingham schools posed by these Islamist teachers. And what happened? What went wrong with the press during that time? Well, New York Times came in and did a thorough job. The result was that the New York Times was smeared, it was attacked, or it was ignored. Its arguments were misrepresented. The British press, instead of saying, ah, oh, the New York Times has got some interesting points here, perhaps we got our reporting wrong, they either ignored the New York Times or launched vicious attacks on it. All I'm asking, and all I think should happen, and it, I think we owe this as journalists to Al Jazeera is to examine in a fair way what they are saying and ask if we got it wrong, how we got it wrong and why we got it wrong and then proceed. I think that it's absolutely fair that Keir Starmer should try and keep order inside the Labour Party as is his duty to win in the next election. The problem with what the Labour files show is that Labour doesn't simply police a free speech. It actually goes around inventing things which its members have never said or smearing them or sort of framing them as anti-Semites or as homophobes or as entryists into the uh, Labour Party. And I think that's... Um, a troubling thing, and that's where it goes wrong. Let's take the example of the Labour Party in Wallasey, which was Corbynista. Their local MP wasn't. A tremendous smear campaign was then aimed at these ordinary activists that they were homophobes. 
bigots. They were being smeared on national TV. I talked to um, Angela about her meeting. She faced homophobic abuse at that meeting. There were no homophobic comments made about the MP. I've never seen such tosh in all my life. What comes over from that is a kind of metropolitan contempt, a sort of senior high up contempt of party officials and uh, senior politicians for ordinary party workers and readiness to use unpleasant and certainly unethical methods to damage the reputations of local people. Now, if I was Keir Starmer, I would be really concerned about this, that he leads a party where the senior Labour people go around the place smearing ordinary Labour members. That's an abuse of power, wrong in any case, but there's no sign that Sir Keir is doing that at the moment. In fact, the whole of the senior part of the Labour Party from Kirstama down has gone into total denial that these films even exist or that these allegations are being made. The only reaction from the Labour Party has either been to ignore these films. Mr Ben, wonder if you've seen the Labour Files? I have not, no. Mr Lammy, sorry. I'm so sorry, I've got to. Oh, OK. Did you see the Labour Files? No, I didn't. We're asking all the, if they've seen the Labour files and if they had any reaction to it. Oh, no, I haven't, sorry. Or to be incredibly abusive. One example came from the former Labour MP, Mike Gates, who after the first film, which dealt with attacks on Labour members, denounced those taking part in the first film as trots, tankies, cranks and anti-Semites. I had a few slots as a talking head in that film. Much more importantly, it interviewed large numbers of local Labour Party members who struck me as rather honourable and decent people. How dare you talk about them in those terms? Can I make a suggestion to Mike Gapes that rather than just respond to these films with sort of ignorant and foul abuse, shouldn't Mr Gapes actually consider the evidence presented in these films and come up with a reasoned argument based again on evidence that the allegations made in the Al Jazeera films are wrong. Present his discourse in a reasoned, intelligent way. That's how public conversations of this kind should be conducted. The response to the Al Jazeera film and indeed the Ford report is a manifestation of a sort of troubling development in British public culture, namely that there's only one point of view uh, permissible on any given subject at any given time. And anybody who challenges that point of view is either ignored or very often pilloried. And this is a very immature way of discussion. The idea of a plural media is that all kinds of points of view can be heard, can be challenged. You learn more that way. There's something almost authoritarian about large parts of contemporary media and indeed public discourse. You do worry about there being a authoritarian streak in Kirstama. When you think of it, there is an irony that the media loved to create the idea that Corbyn was some form of Stalinist about to sort of turn his fire on the kulaks. Um, that was one front page in the Daily Telegraph, whereas Mr. Starmer is, is framed as Mr. Reasonable. In an era of media silence and omerta, do watch Double Down News and subscribe to it on Patreon.